Hi everyone, this is Gus, and today we'll explore together the installation of Kali Linux on Microsoft Azure. As you can see, I'm on the homepage of the Azure portal. To create a Kali VM, you will have to click on the Virtual Machines button at the top. In the next page, you have two options. Either you click on the blue button below to create a new VM, or your second option is to click on the top Add button. In the first step, I will add a new resource group, and I will call it Pentest. So what is a resource group? That's a very good question. It is a group of resources associated with your VM. Simple, right? For example, your VM's virtual networks or your VM storage. Take note that you can always manage them later after the creation of your virtual machine. Speaking about managing them later, Here's what it looks like my Pentest resource group items after the creation. Now you see how a picture worth a million words. Let's move on. I'll give the VM a distinct name. I'll leave the region in the US and it's time to pick the Kali image. Search for the name and it should appear in the list. I'll select it to move on. Nice, now we have it. It's time to choose the VM size. Here, I prefer to keep the suggested default. Of course, this depends on your budget. But if you want to use this VM for engagements, then performance is what you're looking for. Next, I will be using a private key to log in into Kali. I don't recommend using password for this. But in the end, it's your choice. <laughs> you don't want another hacker getting into your box. Okay, I will pick a username that I won't forget and select to generate a new key pair. And we're mostly done. In fact, in the rest of the steps, I will keep the default options. For the disks, I will leave everything as is, unless you want to add some storage. The default size of the disks will be 30 GB. I don't need more than that. In the next window, I won't change any of the networking configs either. Same for the advanced part and the tags as well. In the final stage, the system will try to validate your options to see if any conflicts arise. And we're good. The validation passed. And finally, click on Create. Once you click on the button, you will be asked to download the private key to connect to the SSH server. It will take around 30 seconds and the machine should be up and running. Before I start using the VM, I want to discuss an important topic regarding your virtual machine management. Always turn off your host after you finish working on it. That's very important. Or else you will be charged on every minute. Here you have an important option to auto shut down your Kali in case you forgot. But it will be devastating to realize that this feature turned off your VM by mistake during an engagement. So use it carefully. Now, if I switch to the home page, I should see the new baby in a running state. 
I'll click on it and get all the information and options needed to manage it remotely. Next, I will open my favorite terminal emulator, MOBA Xter. And I'll copy the IP address and write down the username that I picked at the beginning of the process. One final important piece is the private key that I downloaded at the end. Here you go. And I'll click on the OK button to start it. Here you go, folks. A live Kali host running on the cloud. Hopefully, you liked the video and learned something new. If that's the case, Stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials. For now, I wish you all the best in your learning curve.